An estimated two billion people, or one third of the world's population, are infected with the bacteria that cause tuberculosis. One reason so many people are infected with TB is that it's spread through the air from one person to another. When someone with TB disease of the lungs or throat coughs or sneezes, the bacteria are expelled into the air. If people nearby breathe in these bacteria, they can become infected, and usually the infection remains latent. In latent TB infection, the bacteria are made inactive by the body's immune system. The bacteria can remain inactive for many years, perhaps for life. Most people who become infected with TB don't get active TB disease. However, an infected person remains at risk of developing active TB disease at any time. The bacteria can become active and multiply, especially if the immune system becomes impaired. The bad news is, approximately two million people in the world die each year from active TB disease. The good news is, People who have latent TB infection can get treatment that will prevent the development of active TB disease. As a healthcare worker, you play an important role in controlling TB. Your knowledge and skills are valuable in accurately identifying people who have TB infection. In this video, You'll learn how to test for TB infection by administering and reading the Mantu Tuberculin Skin Test. The Mantu Tuberculin Skin Test should always be placed and read by a designated trained healthcare worker. In the United States, the Mantu Tuberculin Skin Test has been the standard method for detecting latent TB infection since the 1930s. The skin test is used to evaluate people for latent TB infection. It's primarily used in two situations. First, it's used in contact investigations to test close contacts of people who have active TB disease. Second, it's used as part of targeted testing activities in various groups of people who are at high risk for TB, such as healthcare workers who serve high-risk clients, residents and employees of correctional facilities, and foreign-born people from areas that have a high TB incidence. The priorities for targeted testing of high-risk populations should be based on local epidemiologic data. Once you've decided who should be tested, then you can begin the Mantu tuberculin skin test procedure. The two main parts include administering and reading the skin test. This part of the procedure includes preparation steps, injection steps, and final steps. The preparation steps include collecting supplies, providing patient education, washing your hands, locating and cleaning the injection site, and preparing the syringe. When preparing to administer the Mantu tuberculin skin test, make sure that the area for administering the test has a firm, well-lit surface and that equipment and supplies are ready. Supplies should include a vial of tuberculin, a single-dose disposable tuberculin syringe, a ruler with millimeter measurements, two-by-two -two gauze pads or cotton balls, alcohol swabs, a puncture-resistant sharps disposal container, record-keeping forms for the patient and provider, and a pen. Tubersol and Aplisol are the two commercially available tuberculin products. The multi-dose vials contain tuberculin for either 10 or 50 tests. 
The tuberculin is administered using a single-dose disposable tuberculin syringe that has a one-quarter to one-half inch 27-gauge needle with a short bevel. In the United States, the MAN-2 tuberculin skin test consists of an intradermal injection of exactly one-tenth of a milliliter which contains five tuberculin units. Syringe and needle technologies continue to evolve to help prevent needle stick injuries. Institutional policy should determine which skin test device has been evaluated and approved for use by your facility. Look at the vial label to make sure the vial contains the tuberculin that you want to use, including the tuberculin unit strength. The label should indicate the expiration date. If it's been open more than 30 days or the expiration date has passed, the vial should be thrown away and a new vial used. When you open a new vial, write the date and your initials on the label to indicate when the vial was opened and who opened it. To avoid reducing the potency of the tuberculin, store it inside a refrigerator so that it remains between 35 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit or between 2 to 8 degrees centigrade. Also, store and transport the tuberculin in the dark as much as possible and avoid exposure to light. In certain settings, such as when you're in the field, you may need to use another type of cooling container to control the temperature and protect from light. After collecting supplies, the next step is patient education. You should sit so that you are both comfortable and facing each other. Discuss why the skin test is given, what is involved in the procedure, and when the patient should return for the test to be read. Explain that 48 to 72 hours after the test is administered, the patient must return to have the induration measured and evaluated. Make an appointment for the patient to return. If a patient can't return within the 48 to 72 hour time period, do not administer the test. Instead, schedule another time that allows the patient to come for both the test and the return appointment. It's also important to encourage the patient to ask questions and talk about any anxieties he or she may have about the test. That way you can answer any questions and ease any fears the patient may have. Consult local practice to find out how best to document informed consent in your setting. After providing patient education, you should wash your hands using an appropriate hand washing technique before administering the test or any other procedure involving patient contact. In certain field settings, it may be necessary to use other hand hygiene techniques. On a firm, well-lit surface, expose the patient's arm and slightly flex it at the elbow. The injection should be placed on the palm side up surface of the forearm, about two to four inches below the elbow. Your local institutional policy may specify the right or the left forearm for the skin test. The area selected should be free of any barriers to placing and reading the skin test, such as muscle margins, heavy hair, veins, sores, or scars. If the patient has any of these at the site, then you should use the other arm or the standard alternative site selected by your institution.